good chunk of Camp Rock merchandise was just Jonas Brothers merchandise, okay? Camp Rock merch was everywhere, but I kid you not, a good 80% of that merchandise was just Jonas Brothers merch. So Disney Channel knew that if it had great musical performances and an attractive cast, that's all they need to make a musical film. It doesn't matter if the story is lackluster. It doesn't matter if the story is terrible. As long as they have those two things, people are going to tune in. I love Nick Jonas so much. I'm pretty sure Nick Jonas was the first white guy that I ever liked other than Dick Grayson. You know who Dick Grayson is? Um, comment down below. He Me and Izzy are not here for the BS today. We're not. Hey y'all, it's Harriana and I'm back with another video. Hello, my name is Harriana and welcome to or welcome back to the pirate ship. Who? No, hold on. I'm sorry, I added new lights to my room. We're going back to blue. You know we don't do pink over here. We're wearing a blue set anyway. Hair is blue. Well, half of it is blue. If you understand what my hair is referenced to, comment down below because I'm gonna laugh if somebody actually gets it correct. But hi, my name is Harry Yana. Welcome to or welcome back to the pirate ship, also known as Harry Hook's pirate ship. Always remember that I am the captain. You are not my first mate. I don't got no first mate. Nobody's worthy of being the first mate. Hello, my name is Harry Yana. If you're new, I like to make content based off nostalgia and family and children entertainment and all the issues that I find within those spaces. Now, y'all, I'm sorry I have been gone for a week, but your girl has been working your girl has been making money moves i was working on set i was um you know filming stuff for the progenies taking care of progeny stuff i've been revamping my merch because i'm trying to bring in new customers and make you know more sales and things like that so your girl has been working non-stop and also i've been back in school getting my school work done your girl really been working non-stop and because of that and because of that, I had to take some time away from YouTube. And I thought that I should come back with like a banger. Hopefully this is a banger because y'all love when I talk about like Disney Channel in general. It don't matter like y'all love Disney Channel discourse and I love making it. So I have my little buddy Izzy here today and we're going to talk about the mess that is um, Camp Rock. We're going to get into it. Let me go. I'm gonna talk about why this movie was a mess because Disney, y'all were not in y'all bag with this one. Y'all were in y'all bag, but y'all weren't at the same time. Anyway, let's carry on and let's continue. So we are going to be talking about the history of the Disney Channel musical and then we're gonna get into why this movie is extremely bad and why Disney just genuinely did not care. So let's go. Music has always been a big part of Disney Channel, whether people don't want to admit it or not. Like, it really always bothered me when somebody said Disney always trying to make people sing and stuff like that. I'm like, y'all, they always been singing. Christy Carlson Romano would sing all the time and Hilary Duff would sing all the time. This is nothing new. So Disney Channel has always been about music, starting with the Mickey Mouse Club, as we know. Britney Spears came from Mickey Mouse Club, Justin Timberlake, Christina Aguilera. Mickey Mouse Club was really a very music-based show. It was a... some of today's biggest stars have come from the Mickey Mouse Club. So Disney will often include music in their programmings from time to time as we will have musical uh, performances in Liz McGuire and even Stevens where even Stevens dedicated an entire episode to music. And then every so often when the channel would go to commercial break, they would play commercials with music in them. It would always be playing music videos. It was like MTV before it not became MTV, if that makes sense. 
So in 2003, Disney decided to release the Cheetah Girls film. Hey, we're the Cheetah Girls. We're here. That's right. We're the recording. Woo. You know, we're here with Jackal Johnson. I'm <laughs> we had to come into the studio probably three or four days before we went to um, Toronto, Canada to shoot the film. And um, we had to lay down just some rough tracks. One of the biggest things I think we want to convey in the songs that are in the movie is our energy. All the songs have a whole lot of energy. I like that. I like the fact that that was a common bond. The Cheetah Girls is Disney Channel's first musical and it was extremely successful. And I personally just don't think Disney expected this movie to do as well. That's just my personal opinion because of how long it took them to make another one in the sense. But the Cheetah Girls was a hit. It probably was a bit of a sleeper hit, but it was a hit. Cheetah Girls was the moment the album went certified double platinum. And that is big for Disney Channel at the time because Back then, uh, even though Disney Channel it was more popping then than it is now because of ratings, because as you guys know, we have, you know, streaming services and things like that. That was a moment. That was actually extremely big. So it was also my introduction to Disney Channel as a child, as it was one of the blackish children's films out at the time. So Cheetah Girls really was my introduction to Disney Channel. I didn't start watching the channel until this film came out where my parents just threw it on for me when they found out there was like a black girl film on the channel. Disney then released two more DCOMs, one named Pixel Perfect, which nobody really remembers all that well because Disney didn't really play it that much, and two Stuck in the Suburbs. I almost said Stuck in the Middle. Great show, by the way. I'll review it at some point. But Stuck in the Suburbs, which is highly underrated, is actually one of Disney Channel's best, in my opinion. Stuck in the Suburbs is one of my is one of my favorite sitcoms. I think it is far better than High School Musical. I don't know if you guys can tell like from my numerous videos that I'm not the biggest fan of High School Musical. I think it's very lackluster, but we're gonna get into that another time. I don't know if y'all can tell, but I just don't think High School Musical is that great. I'm tired of people acting like this movie is so amazing when it truly was not. Stuck in the Suburbs and Pixel Perfect, they both did pretty decent, but they were nothing like how the Cheetah Girls performed. And it didn't really do much for Disney Channel like the Cheetah Girls did. When I say that, basically they just didn't make history for the company. So Disney just kind of doesn't really bat an eye too much when it comes to these two projects. The next thing you know, the next music kind of film that they released was the Proud Family movie, which I don't really count too much as a musical, but music was an important part of that film as the girls, you know, had their girl group and they were performing and all that. It felt like the Cheetah Girls all over again when you think about it. They literally had the same thing going on, the Latina girl, the two black girls, and then the white girl. I never realized that parallel until now. So Disney then decided that they wanted to make another movie focused on music. And we all know it as the pop culture phenomenon today, High School Musical. There is hip hop, there is salsa, Broadway show tunes, contemporary, jazz, and pop, samba, ballads. It's not just the same song over and over again. Over 600 boys and girls auditioned for the movie. The process for the actors, it was not like a traditional audition because they had to be able to act, they had to be able to sing, they had to be able to dance, and they had to be able to connect all three of those ideas and really bring forth an exciting and fun character and performance. High School Musical was so damn big that it really changed the direction of this network forever, okay? If High School Musical never came out, Disney Channel would not be what it is today as it was then. We most likely would not have all of these musicals. I kid you not. High School Musical made Disney so much money because I remember that when the first when the film first came out, there was barely any merchandise out here for it. And then a few months down the line after it released, that is when we start seeing merchandise everywhere for High School Musical. So I personally, same with the Cheetah Girls, I don't think Disney expected it to be that big. As music has always been a factor to Disney Channel, it just became a bit more prominent because of the success of the first High School Musical film. Mind you, this is just the first movie. This is before the second movie even came out because when the second movie came out, that is when it really just took off where Disney was going crazy with the music. 
As Disney, because of High School Musical, Disney decided to bring more and more music into their programming where we would have musical acts more in their shows and Disney decided to give more of their film soundtracks. For example, Jump In. Jump In has an amazing ass soundtrack. I will fight y'all on that to the end the time. So. Next thing you know, Disney Channel then released The Cheetah Girls 2 three years later after the first film. The second Cheetah Girls film did just as well as the first High School Musical film. I'm not saying that it was as big, but it was a big deal, okay? When The Cheetah Girls 2 came on, I remember everybody at school was talking about how they was going to go home and watch The Cheetah Girls 2. It was a really, really big deal. Because of how successful the Cheetah Girls 2 and the first High School Musical film were, Disney realized that they can make big bank off of musicals. They realized that their Disney Channel original movie musicals could bring them more money. So throughout the years, Disney had continued to release more movie musicals. They decided to give the High School Musical movies two more films and a spinoff on its own and also a television series on Disney+. Plus. High School Musical is that big of a deal to the point where they have a TV show for it. It's that big, okay? And they decided to add more and more musical acts within their series. Like, music has always been there, but it was way, way more intimate because t TV series were starting to have more soundtracks now at this point. And there actually was a concert tour for High School Musical and the Cheetah Girls. Disney realized that music is what was making them the best money because it wasn't just the music that was selling it was also the movies that went along with the mu music if it was a musical they knew good and well that they could make so much money off of toys and clothing and merchandise look at freaking Hannah Montana that entire show was about music and it literally made so much money Disney Channel literally planned out for Hannah Montana to be as big as it was. As I mentioned, that is pretty much the history of the DCOM as you know how it began and why it is still here and is not going away anytime soon. So there is one particular film out of all of these DCOMs that really just rubs me the wrong way for numerous reasons and it is not Descendants y'all. We're not here to drag Descendants, kinda. Because this movie right here is just so horribly put together. Like it legit feels like Disney did not try with the plot with this movie at certain points with it. Because it felt like they went in the writer's room, said, okay, as long as we have good music and good musical acts, do what the hell y'all want with that script. I really don't care because at the end of the day, if the song slap, they slap. Who cares if it's a bad movie? That's literally what it feels like with Camp Rock. Camp Rock is atrocious. Camp Rock is horrendous, okay? Camp Rock is the atrocious, the atrocity that made Disney Channel Big Bank. She's really good. Hey, she likes her too. <laughs> absolutely disgusting how much money this horrible movie made them and we're gonna get into that so one of my favorite pastimes is to listen to the camp rock soundtrack as i may not like the film the song slap i think the music is pretty good i listen to two stars every day two stars is actually one of my favorite songs mind you i was never the biggest fan of this film i just like the music and that is the reason why i watched it when i was a kid disney got me right there the film is actually very, very awful. And I understand that this is a children's film. We shouldn't be judging it that hard. But you know, kids deserve better media, okay? And this movie is just bad by children's standards, okay? Like, it's, it's awful. It is just awful. I mean it when I say Camp Rock is Disney's most ugliest cash grab. Because it is so... Hold on, y'all. I'm sorry. It's, uh -huh. Give me a minute to take it together, okay? It legit baffles me. Like, when I recently rewatched Camp Rock years ago, how terrible this movie was. Like, it, it's genuinely bad. 
But what is the story? A very, very awful one, okay? Camp Rock is about a girl named Mitchy who wants to go to music camp. But she can't go to music camp because her mother can't afford it. Her mother is also a very talented chef. So next thing you know, she does get to go because if she works with her mom in the kitchen, that will be able to help pay for her camp tuition, okay? She helps her mom in the kitchen. Long story short, she's embarrassed about her mom being the camp cook. The rich kids are mean to her about it. She has a crush on a famous dude who's a dickhead. And for some reason, she took him back in the end. We're going to get to that. And then they have the end of summer performance and that's the film, okay? That is Camp Rock. Oh, one of the biggest issues that I have with this film is the relationship that was in it, okay? This is worse than Jake and Miley's relationship in Hannah Montana, and we all know that that was horrible. This is kind of worse than Ben and Mal's relationship in Descendants. Shane and Mitchie should not have gotten together whatsoever. That is... I think this may be one of the worst relationships I have seen, period, that has come out of Disney Channel, okay? I hated it more than the Good Luck Charlie mess. Oh my god, it's, uh-oh. -uh. Let me go ahead and just read directly from the notes with this one because I was just so appalled about what I saw. Disney needs to do better about the kind of relationships that they put in their films because they tend to forget that these movies are being made for kids, in my opinion. It is very important what kind of media we are putting in front of children, okay? They see these characters going after people who are terrible for them because Shane was awful to Mitchie. He literally embarrassed her and made her cry in front of everybody and she went back with him in the end i'm sorry baby you don't do that okay they see these characters going after people who are terrible to them and that can have a really really negative influence on children okay because i know so many people were talking about how when they were younger they wanted a relationship like jake and miley's and i'm like no that literally is toxic as hell you don't want that whatsoever but disney tried to play the relationship off as cute and couple goals and what made it worse is that Jake and Miley were a celebrity relationship and you know kids idolize celebrities they look up to celebrities they literally will see celebrity couples and say couple goals when literally we don't know they could be fighting behind the scenes they could be cheating on each other all the time it could be really really bad okay this can have a really really negative influence on children like disney needs to really do better about this and they actually have done better about this you know i actually have to pay my respects when it's due to disney i am actually very happy about what happened with their newest movie spin okay i didn't want to make a full-on video about spin because um i know that was gonna make my own viewership go down because nobody watched spin but by the way um this is where the spin spoilers are coming at so if you don't want to hear the spoilers for spin there will be a timestamp for you to click and go to the next part of this video so spin disney channel's most recent decom which was so excellent i really highly recommend that you guys go watch is a musical film about a south asian girl who finds a love for music and she becomes a dj Funk and soul. Now, are you ready for your first DJ lesson? Yes. Yeah, we'll see about that. So, uh, break all this down for me. All right, we've got the two turntables and the mixer, and this is the crossfader. You can choose the track that the crowd can hear. <laughs> Sounds like a mess, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So her love interest in the film, who was a white man, which I really did have a big problem with because I was like, Disney, why couldn't y'all give her a love interest of color? But anyway, anyway, let's continue. Her love interest in the film betrays her midway through where he steals her song and then he tells her that he wasn't wrong for stealing her music. Y'all, I legit fell out of my chair at that part because I couldn't comprehend what he was saying to her i was like are you serious are you serious men ain't shit damn he really took her song and then tried to flip the script on her like she did something wrong anyway let's go ahead and continue okay and just knowing disney i was extremely scared to see how this was gonna turn out because i was like okay are they gonna have another really toxic relationship where they get back together and they have numerous sequels of them fighting and whatnot descendants but anyway let's continue okay i was so scared that she was gonna take him back in the end and guess what she didn't take him back in the end at all 
You want to know what? Disney, this isn't just a problem with Camp Rock. It's a big problem in a lot of their programming. How Teddy and Spencer and Good Luck Charlie, he literally freaking cheated on her and she went back to him. And her whole entire family was telling her that she was wrong, which I'm glad they did. I am glad that Disney included that in there. But they continued to portray them as if they were something cute when they really weren't, okay? Disney just has a big, big problem of going back to people when there are numerous red flags in the relationship and they continue to get hurt by this person. But I am so glad and Spin that she didn't go back to him in the end. And I know that was a difficult decision for her because she really did like that guy. He helped her discover a new hobby that she fell in love with. And I'm so glad that she built the strength not to take him back in the end, okay? Like what made Spin such an excellent movie? It wasn't the story. It was how strong she was she was strong enough not to go back to somebody that hurt her because this isn't just dating this also goes for friendships it is difficult to leave someone who has hurt you so bad because of the history that you guys had okay and her and this guy did have history but she didn't go back to him in the end and I really really love that y'all go watch Spin go watch Spin it's an excellent movie and it looks beautiful. That's actually one of the prettiest decoms that I've seen, okay? And Dizzy from Descendants is in there for any Descendants fans that don't want to watch it. Yeah. So back to Camp Rock, there were so many red flags with Shane and Mitchie's relationship. So when she got back with him, I couldn't help but roll my eyes because it literally made no sense for those two to be together. He mainly got with her because he liked the way she sang. He thought she had a beautiful singing voice, but he literally chomped her out and everybody and embarrassed her in front of everyone. And she still took him back? I'm sorry, baby. If you hurt me in front of thousands of people, we're never, ever getting back together. That's how mad I am. Y'all got me over here quoting Taylor Swift and I can't stand her. I couldn't help but roll my eyes at that scene because it made no sense for them to get back together because like I said before, he was a total dickhead. His behavior didn't change. He was still just an awful person in the beginning of the movie as he was in the end. He didn't change at all whatsoever okay like them getting together just felt really rushed and weird in the sense like they never made up they just genuinely just got back together he figured out that she was the girl with the beautiful voice and they got back together that is such that is such a dick move like that is just terrible they never made up they never got back together they never talked it out he literally just figured out that she was the girl that sang and then got with her that is just so ugly okay and speaking of shame since we're on the topic of shame most of the characters are not likable in this film almost everyone in this movie is annoying everyone is irritating okay the only people in this film that really did not irritate me were the side characters the side characters that had a few lines here and there and just did all the performances for the most part that were just there at the camp for music they weren't involved in the drama whatsoever they were the only people in the movie that didn't bother me but we we gotta bring this up because it was something very very weird that I peaked okay the diversity in this film is trash are we surprised no but it's Disney Channel in the 2000s wait what did we expect the diversity in Camp Rock was there but its representation was very very weird in a sense okay like many of the background characters and minor characters are people of color okay the black girl that got the most attention in the movie her name is Peggy she was getting pushed around by her white friend the entire time and I'm glad that she finally did stand up for her in the end and she won the, comp the competition in the end and I think Peggy is great on um, black girl representation for young black girls like I really did appreciate having her character as a kid how she finally stood up for herself and didn't let Tess push her around but it's so weird because much of the story focused on the drama with the white kids that we barely got to spend enough time with Peggy to see her story be fleshed out better. 
like her storyline wasn't nearly as big as theirs and I don't know who wrote this movie but woo, like I said all like the big people of color the biggest person of color she had the smallest storyline and the rest of them were just minor characters that didn't really just have a story for the most part but the writers for this film i really would just like to have a sit down and talk with them because it's just beyond the diversity that was bad it's just the dialogue that is bad y'all i'm sorry but teenagers don't act like this at all everyone in this film either acts like they are under the age of 11 or they act as if they're 21 and older it's so weird half of them act like adults and then half of them act like elementary school children it's just weird like the stuff they were doing was stuff that little kids would do like that whatever major loser thing that test always did people at elementary school used to do that this girl at my summer camp did that to me after this movie came out she was trying to bully me she was trying to call me a loser and i laughed in her face and walked away like girl and you want to know what disney does not care that 90 percent of this movie was awful because of two things one the musical numbers and two it had the jonas brothers okay we're gonna get there in a second okay if you watch the musical numbers in camp rock they're all pretty great. The cast is very, very talented when it came to singing and dancing. Not so much acting, but singing and dancing. I give my props when it's due. They are very, very great performances. I love watching them. I love watching the two stars performers, you know, before she ended up crying and running off stage. Hasta La Vista is just very, very beautifully shot. It is a very high energy performance. It was really great and to the Jonas Brothers like I mentioned if you had a boy band of attractive young men of course they knew that kids were going to watch it okay if it had good music kids were going to watch it as I mentioned I had a big crush on Nick Jonas when I was younger and I also really enjoyed the music in Camp Rock did I like the movie no but because of those two things I watched it and we didn't really have the internet like that then too so anytime they played it on television I was just watch it and it would contribute to its ratings Disney didn't care if people were watching for the horrible story or not they knew people were gonna tune in because they had the Jonas Brothers in there and this movie right here is look put the Jonas Brothers on the map also like yeah they had their attention when they did the poor unfortunate soul cover for the Little Mermaid re-release but Camp Rock literally is what put the Jonas Brothers on the map so Disney Channel knew that if it had great musical performances and an attractive cast, that's all they need to make a musical film. It doesn't matter if the story is lackluster. It doesn't matter if the story is terrible. As long as they have those two things, people are going to tune in. I'm trying for Camp Rock so pretty well along with Halloween costume, toys, doll, little makeup kits and whatnot and clothing. It also had its own tour and it also had its own stage production where Disney Channel would take a lot of their productions and adapt them into theater. So I thought that was pretty pretty cool. But y'all, I'm not gonna, I'm even gonna lie. Like, it wasn't like a high school musical situation like when the movie first came out and you couldn't really find merch for it anywhere. There was Camp Rock merch right away when it came out because right after the movie came out, my mama bought me a Camp Rock shirt with the Jonas Brothers on it. Good chunk of Camp Rock merchandise was just Jonas Brothers merchandise, okay? Camp Rock merch was everywhere, but I kid you not, a good 80% of that merchandise was just Jonas Brothers merch. I love Nick Jonas so much. I'm pretty sure Nick Jonas was the first white guy that I ever liked other than Dick Grayson. You know who Dick Grayson is? Um, comment down below. He's a horrible adult. Like, he is such a horrible person. But anyway, you know who that is. Please comment down below, okay? Camp Rock was obviously made because of the success of High School Musical, y'all. So Disney knew that if they made another musical film with big grand music numbers like the Cheetah Girls and High School Musical, that it would make them a lot of money. And they were not wrong. Disney knew exactly what they were doing when they made this film. They were absolutely correct but it's annoying how people like to say that this film was good 
when it really wasn't everything everybody has their own opinion everybody is subject to this and that and the third but people genuinely sit here and talk as if camp rock along with high school musical are amazing movies and they truly aren't when it comes to decoms those are honestly two of the weakest ones when it comes to story okay there are much better decoms out here than the big name ones that everybody refers to okay but because these are the ones that everybody remembers because these are the ones that everybody is thrown at they're targeted as the best ones and that is absolutely incorrect okay like i said stuck in the suburbs is a much better movie than high school musical and camp rock but you won't know that because disney won't act like it is when you go and look at all the stuff that disney promotes they're never promoting their lesser known decoms even if they are better films i kid you not that was like camp rock came out today Y'all would be dragging it the same way y'all drag zombies and the same way y'all drag descendants. Tell the truth. The reason people tend to think that Cam Rock is great is because of nostalgia along with High School Musical, okay? The reason y'all like High School Musical along with Cam Rock so much is because of the music, okay? It's because of that music. If that was just a regular schmegular movie, mm -mm. if it had no music in it, mm-mm. Mm-mm. I feel like this video was pretty easy for me to make because I never had a problem saying I never liked Camp Rock because I didn't like it as a kid. I was pretty open about me not liking the film and just liking the music. But Camp Rock may be terrible, but it made Disney millions and millions of dollars and y'all... Disney is fully aware that kids will just watch anything. Like, I openly admitted how... I just watched Camp Rock when it came on because I wanted to hear the music. Disney knows that kids will also watch anything and they will also watch it over and over and over again, okay? It don't matter if it's good. They just know that whatever they put out with music and pretty people in it, it is guaranteed to give them a fat check. That's just how Disney musicals work. Disney don't care if they're good movies. Which is sad because kids deserve good stuff. Kids deserve good media, but... Mm. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. This one was pretty fun. It feels good to be back on YouTube. I do have to take a bit of a break again because, y'all, I have to get so much stuff from my store together. I am meaning it when I'm trying to do better about my merch. I have learned a lot about running a business this year. And, yeah, the new launch is going to be pretty, pretty great, okay? I got so much new stuff. I have super duper cute packaging and whatnot. I am extremely excited for this new release to come. It should be dropping later on this month in September. Happy September, body da. <laughs> if you like this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you want another way you can support me, you can support my merchandise. I will have the link to my shop down below. Pretty much everything is uh, sold out at the moment, but there are still some things that I am trying to get rid of as I am making new way for more inventory. You guys like to check that out. Have that down below. I also have Patreon. Uh, lowest tier is $1. Most expensive is 5 So I do try to keep it pretty cheap over there. We have a lot of fun over there on the harbor. That is what I call my patreon if you guys would like to keep up with me for free and just support what i do please follow me on everything at Harriana. i'm literally on everything letterbox pinterest tumblr webpad twitter everything is just Harriana. okay instagram i'm not sure if i said that um that's pretty much it for today's video love you guys thank you guys for watching have a good night izzy said good night